If you buy a MacBook without spending too much money, you'll probably end up with a 13 inch MacBook, which it's very portable and it's very light and it's I have a great experience so far with it. But I often find myself wanting more screen real estate. So then you can get like maybe a 15 inch from years ago, but that's not as fast and doesn't have USB-C. Or you can buy a 16 inch, but that I don't think your wallet is really gonna like. So I like to use a second display if I want more real estate on macOS, but I like to keep it portable as well. So then you will end up with a portable monitor. Or if you have an iPad, you can use Apple's sidecar feature that lets you use your iPad as a second display, like either wired or wireless. In this video, I'm going to compare like a portable monitor or a Apple sidecar feature on iPad to see which one's the best and to see which is the more budget friendly option or more bang for your buck and which is the most portable. I used to own a tablet and I'm still not sure whether I prefer a tablet or iPad because Samsung tablets have some great features but if you want to use them as a second display for your MacBook you would have to use a third party app. I tried various applications including Super Display or X Display I think it's called. Those are fine options although I think one of them costs a bit of money. I do think that the second display feature built into Windows 10 and Windows 11 is the best one. However, I don't think you can use that wired. I do think for getting work done, wired is the best way to go to avoid having connection issues. I also tried the famous duet display, which is supposedly created by ex-Apple employees, and I didn't like it at all. <laughs> it has uh, quite a bit of lag with my tablet and a MacBook. That's why I am using for this video a iPad, because I do think iPads provide the best use experience for using a second monitor for your MacBook. Having those two options with wired and wireless, I think is great. Uh, with a portable monitor, obviously the most easy solution is just a wire. It's pretty much only wired, or you get like a casting system that lets you airplay to a portable monitor but then it gets kind of expensive and a bit more tricky but the upside of a portable monitor is you have way more choices way more uh, screen resolution choices way more sizes you can choose if you want a light one like i have a really light and thin one or a more feature packed one there are even ones with touch screen i believe and so like you also have 15.6 inch uh, monitors which is the one i have as of now no ipad has that size of screen the closest to that would be a 12.9 inch ipad and the new 12.9 inch iPad, uh, it, it's it's great. I do believe it's great, but it's so expensive for most people. <laughs> so 12.9 inch will be an option. Then you have 11 inch, which is uh, quite reasonable because the Air comes in 11 or 10.9 inch and the Pro 2. And then you have the, the very basic budget iPad. That one is, I believe, 10.5 inch. And then you have the iPad mini with like 6 inch. I do think the sweet spot would be 11 inches. I've tried 12.9 and 11 inches on iPad Sidecar. Of course, more screen real estate is better but it's not 400 500 or 300 dollars more better <laughs> also the 12.9 inch ipad i believe it's 600 grams and it's it's quite heavy it's not really comfortable to hold in your hands whereas this portable monitor that i have it's 400 grams or something and it's a noticeable difference because like it's 15.6 inches and it's so light i think it's a very good option if you want a light and big screen but let's uh, explore this further you also got to take into consideration that you have to buy probably an accessory like a stand for an ipad because they don't come with the stand whereas a portable monitor usually comes with a stand to prop it up it's not super expensive but that does add up to the cost. I like to use this stand from Ulancy because that one has like multiple quarter 20 inch screw holes and also a cold shoe mount. This one extends so you can also put a 12.9 inch iPad or a portable monitor because vertically they're the same dimensions in this little stand which I personally use quite a lot and it's very handy so far. The portable monitor from Uperfect I have here has a 1080p display at 15.6 inches. It's quite glossy. With portable monitors they often cheap out on brightness so i chose one that has a high brightness it's, it's a qled panel qled panels are known to be color accurate and bright this one has 400 nits i advertised 500 so look closely because in my case i saw it was 400 <laughs> of course it's not oled levels of contrast but it's actually very color accurate the colors really pop and sometimes i find the colors a bit too saturated for example the color red is, is is quite saturated sometimes it's a bit funny looking luckily there's a menu where you can adjust all these things and navigate around the menu to adjust brightness or volume with uh, those uh, cheap made buttons uh, on the side 
It's a close match between this mini LED panel and the iPad LCD screen because Apple's LCD screens are very color accurate as well. Of course, it's no match for the 12.9 inch 2021 iPad because that one has a mini LED panel that's like insanely color accurate with really deep blacks as well. iPads have double the resolution and do run brighter though. Uh, the brighter thing is very nice outdoors and the anti-reflectivity coating on the iPad is very good. However, the resolution to me is not a problem. 15 0.6 inches is fine with a 1080p display for my needs so you would have to figure out if you really need 2k 2.7k or 4k screen i don't think it's uh, necessary it really consumes uh, battery life uh, for a small display like 15 inches both of these screens have p3 color support however another channel found out actually that measuring those colors and comparing them side by side turned out that the portable monitor is more color accurate because the compression that apple does with sidecar makes the color accuracy worse than the portable monitor i think the average user will not notice a big difference i think both are completely fine displays both are very color accurate the colors of the mini led portable monitor that i have they pop more whereas the ipad looks more like a macbook air or macbook pro display both are 60 hertz by the way and to my eyes uh, the responsiveness is the same like i said portable monitors they do sometimes come with a touch screen if you choose that however i think the windows operating system is way more suitable for touch than mac os mac os is really not meant for touch you cannot use touch on an ipad sidecar unless you have the apple pencil feature which still really limits the use of your touch it's basically just a, a little gimmick that i never use. Speaking of gimmicks, a touch bar is visible on iPad sidecar mode if you choose so. I disabled it just like all the other touch things like there's also a range of options on the left hand side which I also not really use so I disabled it to get the most screen we all stay. If you do have a MacBook with a touch bar which I do believe can be very useful then the touch bar gets mirrored so that's another story. I don't have a touch bar on my MacBook but for some that would be cool in the iPad sidecar feature just like pulling out the little keyboard on the panel on the left but for me no the ipad obviously has way more features than a portable monitor does um, including apple's new feature called universal control which is a whole nother beast on its own currently in beta version but it's a very promising feature because it lets you use your mouse book or a bluetooth mouse and keyboard to another ipad uh, without changing much it's very accessible and easy but something can also be said for a portable monitor which you can turn into a little mini cinema as i call it or a media streamer or player on stairways where you prop it up on a tripod or a stand plug in a power bank to keep it running for a while and a chromecast which you also plug into the power bank and the portable monitor and there you go you have a little streaming setup which the audio from the portable monitor is very bad so i also added some an external soundbar for my soundbar comparison video which is very light and has very good sound quality in my opinion and then you can just plug that in via an aux cable to the portable monitor and you have great um, visuals and great audio too you can also use this portable monitor with like a phone or a tablet from samsung with a feature called samsung dex which is another operating system built into samsung you can use it on its own but it's very useful if you plug in a bigger display to your samsung device that supports dex and then you have literally a operating system that is very nice a uh, bit like windows where with resizable windows with multitasking it's it's way ahead of uh, the joke that's called ipad os <laughs> but the wireless uh, option of sidecar is still worth mentioning again because you can really use it in a pinch if you want quickly another display like for finder window or for spotify or in the train where i use it quite a bit to prop it up to the chair in front of me and to basically avoid neck pain by looking down all the time at my laptop a very nice thing about the portable monitor is that it has pass-through charging so it can literally charge your macbook when it's connected to power with one cable and it doesn't take that many watts on its own for example if you use a 65 watt power brick it probably will pass through 60 of those watts to your macbook and it will consume five of them which i think is great because it does actually free up a port on your macbook and we all know that these new macbooks are very low on ports and port 
diversity. So it's nice to see the wide range of port options on the portable monitor that you don't have on the MacBook, including, well, the aux jack and also a micro USB port that you can connect an OTG adapter to, to connect a mouse or a keyboard or like an air mouse or a remote, which can also be very useful, especially in that uh, mini cinema mode that I just made up. I think if your primary use is a having a second display, then a portable monitor will definitely be the better option for you, the better bang for buck option at least. And also the better portability option because it's lighter and you have more screen real estate. Sure, if you have an iPad laying around like the, one of those budget iPads, the 10.5 inch screen is still perfectly fine to use sidecar in a pinch. It's definitely nice to have on the side, that's hands sidecar. That being said, I personally choose the luxury of having both to use the 11 inch iPad in a pinch very quickly or with limited space. I would uh, not recommend the 12.9 inch version. It's simply too big and bulky. If you want that bigger screen, I use the 15.6 inch portable monitor as like a mobile workstation uh, on the go, which actually is the same weight or even lighter as the iPad. It's a perfect way to get work done when you're in a uh, working environment or a cafe, something like that. So I hope that was a clear picture of the differences between those two. They each have their own use case. Uh, but if you really want high portability and the best bang for your buck, don't bother with an iPad for that feature. Just get a portable monitor. iPads are great for other things, but not only to use as more screen real estate for your MacBook. No. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you liked it and see you next time.